Hello everyone, I'm Danny Roddy, and today I wanted to talk about a couple of reasons that I believe that ketosis actually mimics the stress metabolism. Before we get too far into it, we should go over what so-called nutritional ketosis actually is. If you dramatically cut down on your carbohydrate consumption, in addition to expending your liver's reserve of sugar, sometimes called glycogen, an increased functioning of adaptive stress hormones and signaling substances will increase the rate of lipolysis. That is, they'll liberate free fatty acids into the blood to use as fuel. This is sometimes referred to as becoming a fat burner and is said to be an ideal metabolic state for warding off diseases like obesity, diabetes, and even cancer. I think these claims are physiologically bankrupt, and while I don't necessarily believe that ketosis is incompatible with health, I'm not sure there's physiologically any reason for inducing a ketogenic state for any reason. Before we get too far, a large part of this video is going to hinge on the specifics of energy metabolism and energy metabolism in context with constantly renewing the organism and supporting every function imaginable. In his 1957 book, The Living State with Observations on Cancer, Albert St. Georgie said that a cell needs energy for all of its functions, but also to maintain its structure. The ability of the cell to maintain this high energy, relaxed state is bracketed by the availability of glucose and oxygen. Because protein, carbohydrate, and fat can provide glucose, oxygen is the ultimate bottleneck in efficient energy generation through the mitochondria, sometimes called oxidative metabolism or mitochondrial respiration. Bracketing oxygen use is the so-called waste product, carbon dioxide, which is produced under the direction of good thyroid function. Among its many functions, carbon dioxide dissociates oxygen from the hemoglobin molecule, better allowing cells, tissues, and organs to absorb oxygen. Hans Selye, a pioneering endocrinologist in the field of stress, found that an interference in the organism's ability to generate efficient energy resulted in the inability to meet energy requirements. This resulted in the organism mounting an adaptive stress response to restore stability. Over time, this chronic adaptive stress response would become less and less efficient, leading to the disorganization of the entire organism and ultimately death. Another way to think about it is that glucose, oxygen, and especially carbon dioxide are the most basic anti-stress factors and that you wouldn't want to do anything to interfere with the utilization or the generation of these substances. So now that that's out of the way, let's talk about one reason why ketosis actually mimics the stress metabolism. If there's one thing to take away from this video, it's that becoming a fat burner, as they say, or increasing the rate of lipolysis through carbohydrate restriction voluntarily is a hallmark of aging and disease. For instance, one study found that free fatty acid levels increase long before hyperglycemia becomes present. And another said that there seems to be little doubt that there are signals for increased mobilization of fat in shock, trauma, and sepsis. And another quote, the enhanced mobilization and oxidation of fat is one of the fundamental responses to stress. The mechanism here is that in the short term, adrenaline is increased, squeezing all of the glycogen out of the liver and liberating free fatty acids into the blood. Over the long term, cortisol and a variety of other hormones, especially from the pituitary, increase the rate of lipolysis slowing the metabolism and bringing the renewal of the entire organism to a screeching halt. Another way ketosis mimics the stress metabolism is by producing less carbon dioxide. This happens primarily by the oxidation of free fatty acids providing much less carbon dioxide than that of glucose. Glucose oxidation, by way the link reaction and the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase, provides far more carbon dioxide than the oxidation of free fatty acids. In addition to being a basic anti-stress factor, Dr. Chris Masterjohn has recently pointed out that carbon dioxide is a critical cofactor for the assimilation of the oh-so-important fat-soluble vitamins a point that the entire paleo and ancestral health community has completely ignored. The final point I wanted to get across is that ketosis is essentially a hibernation-like state for humans. Rather than taking my word for it, 
you, the viewer, can actually measure your metabolic rate and see if carbohydrate restriction or an increase in carbohydrate consumption or ketosis is having a measurable impact on your metabolic rate. My two favorite self-diagnostics are the resting pulse rate in combination with the body temperature. And measuring those a few times a day can provide insight into the rhythmic changes of the metabolism. Hans Selye found that the pulse could barely be felt in extreme stress situations, and Landsberg et al. recently wrote a paper describing the association between a low body temperature and several different health problems. That's all for me. Please leave your constructive comments and criticisms in the comment section, and I'll talk to you guys soon.